Cantrips, leveled spells, preparing, expending, regaining, adding, wasting. Magic in 5e gets complicated fast, but today we're going to slow down and nail each and every part of it. Welcome to Spellcasting and You, the comprehensive guide to magic in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Let's get started. Firstly, not every magical effect is a spell, but every spell is a magical effect. Abilities such as an Ancient's Paladin's spell resistance only works against enemy mages. A Breath Attack from a Dragon is not a spell, but it is oftentimes considered magical. This means that Counterspell and Dispel Magic will not work on things that are not spells. So a good rule that I like to use is to say, I'm casting a spell. Wait a second for counter spells and then go. That lets my players know that what I'm doing is a spell and therefore falls under the classification of spell. I ask my players to do the same. And if I don't wait, then they know it's not a spell. And we don't have any sort of a slowdown. Secondly, what are the breakdowns for spells and why do they have levels? Because nothing can be easy, of course. Cantrips, or level zero spells, are magic that can be cast at will, which means that you can never run out of castings. They don't use slots or charges, they just are. Almost all cantrips are actions. Out of the 46 cantrips currently in D&D 5e, only two are bonus actions, and one takes a minute to cast. Those bonus action cantrips are Magic Stone and Shillelagh, which prepare you to use your action to make an attack with them, and the one minute guy is Mending. So if you're ever in doubt, think about that. Your cantrip is probably an action. Leveled spells, those ranging from 1st to ninth, are granted to casters per their level up table. These slots are expended when a spell is cast at that level. You can use them however you like, for example, a level 1 wizard can cast Magic Missile two times and have that be it for the day. Or they can also cast Shield and Burning Hands instead. These slots are not limited to certain spells and can be decided on being used in the moment, depending on what's most important. Leveled spells can be actions, bonus actions, reactions. Uh, they can have casting times from 1 minute to 10 minutes or even an hour. If a spell says Ritual on it, then you can cast it without spending one of your spell slots. You can do so only at its base level, and you have to extend its casting time by 10 minutes. So it's not a combat thing, but it's really useful. The classes that can cast Ritual spells are Artificer, Bard, Cleric, and Wizard. Thirdly, continuing from last time's combat video, you'll remember how we talked very briefly about actions, bonus actions, and the like. Well, spells have a limiting effect. As the game specifies, only one leveled spell can be cast by a caster each turn. That means if you use your action or bonus action to cast a spell, you cannot cast any more until the next creature's turn. Or if you use your reaction on your turn to cast a spell, say you tried walking away from someone, they made an attack against you, and you cast shield, that means that you can no longer cast spells or in reverse, if you cast a spell, then move, you can't cast shield. Even if you cast a leveled spell from a magic item, such as a Staff of Frost, you cannot cast another leveled spell until the next turn, even if you didn't expend the magical energy from yourself. I usually change that rule in my games. We homebrew the fact that you could only cast one leveled spell from yourself, each turn. So if you cast shield, you cannot cast magic missile or vice versa. But if you say use the staff of frost to cast, I don't know, Kona cold, then you can still use your reaction to cast shield because you cast the magic from the item and not you. Now, what classes can cast spells? The full caster classes, as they're defined, are bards, clerics, druids, sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards. Warlocks are weird, but they're technically full casters. This means that at every odd level, 
they gain a new level of spell. At first level, they can cast first. At third level, they can cast second, fifth, third, seventh, fourth, and so on, all the way up until level 17, where they get ninth level spells, the highest in the game. The half casters, as they're defined, are the artificer, paladin, and ranger. They reach their next level of spell at each of the proficiency bonus markers. That's the easiest way to think about it. And they usually don't get their magic until second level. And that was true until the Artificer dropped in Tasha's, but whatever. Their magic advances at levels 1 or 2, depending on when they get it. And then at 5th level, they get 2nd level spells, 9th, 3rd, 13th, 4th, and 17th, 5th. As you'll notice, they only grow half as fast and only reach 5th level slots. This is why they're called half casters. Third casters are rare. The original Artificer was a third caster, but now only two official subclasses are third casters, those being the Arcane Trickster Rogue and the Eldritch Knight Fighter. These guys are more so rogues and fighters with magic than actual spellcasters. It's really an accent piece. Their magic starts at 3rd level with 1st level spells, advances at level 7 for 2nd level spells, 13th for 3rd, and 19th for 4th level spells. Now these rules are purely for when they get any slots. For all of those guys, those are just when the slots open. But why do they only get a certain number of slots? Can they use low level spells in high level slots? How many spells do they know at a time with these slots, and, and how do they get them back? We'll tackle that last point first, because it's really easy. All classes, aside from Warlock, regain their full amount of spell slots back after completing a long rest. You sleep for 8 hours, you get your magic. Wizards get an ability at level 1 that lets them get a few back on a short rest, and Warlocks are the special one. Warlocks regain their slots after short or long rests, since they only get a few, they get them back very frequently. Classes only get a certain number of slots because spells are strong. Imagine if you could cast Fireball at will. Nothing aside from red dragons and iron golems would be a challenge at all. And so they determined that this is how many times you can cast these spells each day. And why the Pearl of Power is a fantastic item to keep in your back pocket. Leveled spells can indeed be cast at higher levels. They must be cast at least at their minimum, though. So Fireball is a 3rd level spell. It can be cast at 3rd through 9th, not at 2nd. Guardian of Faith is 4th. Same process. But if you want to cast Magic Missile at 3rd level, you can, and it gets stronger. A lot of spells in the game get stronger when cast at higher levels, but not all of them. So read ahead before you do, unless you really need to cast the spell at that level because you don't have lower level slots. They can always be upcast, but it might not do anything extra, so just don't waste it if you don't gotta. And lastly, for those couple aforementioned points, how many spells does each class know? Well, we're gonna address the Bard, Ranger, Sorcerer, and Warlock first because they're easy. Also, the two third casters, Arcane Trickster and Eldritch Knight. Each of these classes has you know, this many spells, it says right on their class list. Every level you can exchange one spell you know with a new one, in addition to learning new spells if your number goes up. You can cast these spells as many times as you have slots, so a level 5 ranger can cast Hunter's Mark 6 times a day, 4 times at 1st level and 2 times at 2nd level. Warlock's spells level with them. When it says slots, that means you have that many slots, and you have them at that stated level. So it starts at 1, at level 1, and then you get 2 slots at level 1, at level 2, and then you get 2 level 2 slots at level 3, and so on and so forth. It's a little complicated, but there's not too much to any of those guys. It's it's pretty easy so long as you take the time to read and understand. It only takes a few minutes. Next up, wizards. Wizards are a weird one. They're the only one in this intermediary zone, between those before and those to come after. You start with six level one spells, and every level after first you learn two new spells. You cannot exchange any spells at level up, but you can learn spells from other wizard spellbooks 
or from spell scrolls. Only if those spells are on the wizard list, of course. Baldur's Gate 3. You can prepare a number of your insane number of spells for use every day, equal to your wizard level, plus your intelligence modifier. You do not need to prepare cantrips. That is true for every class that does prepare spells. Cantrips are always prepared. Wizards are also unique in that they can ritual cast unprepared spells. So do not prepare mage armor and probably don't prepare identify, detect magic, or comprehend languages either, though those are more debatable. Lastly, artificers, clerics, druids, and paladins know everything. And if you think I'm joking, you're dead wrong. They know their entire spell lists and can prepare every day an entirely new list of spells from their lists. And they can prepare a number that sounds familiar because it's how wizards do it. They get their spellcasting ability modifier, either intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, plus either their class level or half their class level rounded down for artificer and paladin. This is insane. It puts a crazy amount of stress on every long rest for these classes, but why not, I guess? You pick wrong, everybody's dead. But if you wanted to swap cure wounds with Searing Smite, you know, power to ya. So we've covered how spell slots work, how classes get spells and how they use them, the differences between cantrips and leveled spells, how spells are used in combat, how to read a spell in the book. I can only see three more things to talk about. A quick dive into the schools of magic, a slightly longer delve into concentration and the other erroneous aspects of spells, and lastly, an exhaustive list of the most common spells that are good for every class to build themselves around. Let's go! So, what are the schools of magic? Well, they're abjuration, wards, shielding, protection, and magic traps. Conjuration, summoning things, divination, sourcing otherworldly knowledge. Enchantment, charming and infusing magic into other things. Evocation, blowing things up and healing things for some reason. Illusion, making things that aren't real and cannot be touched but they look cool. Necromancy, raising the dead and talking to the dead and summoning the power of the dead. Just a lot of death related things. And lastly, transmutation, turning things into other things. And that's basically it. Those are the schools. Other aspects of magic we have not yet talked about. Concentration and duration. A spell lasts for its duration once cast. If it says instantaneously, it's over and done with. If it says one minute or ten minutes, it lasts that long unless you die. I usually rule that the spell stays active even if you fall unconscious. Obviously you don't have control over it because you're unconscious, but I'm sure that's probably wrong, so whatever. And if a spell says concentration, then you have to maintain active control over that spell. You have to stay conscious, avoid becoming incapacitated, such as by a whole person spell. Uh, you cannot cast another concentration spell, and you drop concentration if you take damage and fail a constitution saving throw. The DC for which changes depending on how hard you're hit. It's either 10 or half the damage you take rounded down, whichever of those two is higher. So unless the damage you take is 22 or higher, it's a DC 10 con save. Range and area of effect. These are not the same thing. Fireball has a range of 150 feet, but a radius of 20 feet. A lot of people mess that up, and that's okay. A spell's range will be written in the range section. The other stuff will be written in the text block. If a spell has a range of self, it may have a range out from you following that, but otherwise, range is its own thing separated from the area. Magic components, the good old VS and M. V is for verbal. If you can't talk, you're silenced underwater, there's no air. You cannot cast these spells. S is for somatic. This is moving your hands, making magical peace signs and gestures that cast spells. If your hands are bound, it's unlikely you can cast a somatic spell. Strangely, the grappled and restrained conditions do not prevent or even mention somatic castings, and the definition for somatic castings does not mention them either. M is for material. If a spell has a material component with no gold cost and it's not consumed, then you can either cast it with the component described, such as fireballs, batshit, or you can use your arcane focus. If a spell does have a consumed component or a component with a cost, then you need that thing, such as hero feasts, go goblets, or whatever, I don't remember, golems, some weird. 
Anti-magic fields suck, and I hate them. Inside of an anti-magic field, there is no magic. It's in the name. No spells or other magical abilities, such as magic weapons or armor or rings or anything, can work. Once you leave this field, all constant things continue, like enchantments, and usually spells active on things are either dispelled or suppressed. If they're suppressed, they come back. If they're dispelled, they don't, and you have to recast them or they're done for. It all depends on the specific effect, they will say. And if they don't, I usually rule it's, it's suppression, because it's a little less cruel. It's more of a in-the-moment thing than a, oh, so I flipped the switch and you're all done now. Multiclassing spell slots. Multiclassing gets complicated. Two levels of bard and two levels of sorcerer produces a fourth level caster. You have four first level slots and three second level slots, but you only know level one bard and level one sorcerer spells, as if you were level two of each, your slots are just bigger. This means that if you cast a spell slot from bard, you do not also keep that spell slot on sorcerer. They are the same pool of slots. It's very important. If you can keep the spells on one sheet, I still wouldn't recommend it. I still wouldn't. You can. It's gonna screw your brain up. Make a bunch of separate sheets and just remember when you tick one off on one, tick it off on all of them. Much simpler. Multiclassing Paladin in there is just gonna make this even worse, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna make a mess. A mess right here, all right? We're gonna throw two levels of Paladin in there, which increases your caster level to five, meaning you have four first, three second, and two third level slots. You can prep one plus your Charisma mod spells for Paladin and cast them at up to third level. Or just smite at third level, which is the better option, always. However, when you reach third level Paladin, normally you would become a second level caster as shown in their table because things are weird. But when you multi-class, you don't. Your multi-class half-caster level is determined in even steps, so two, four, six, etc., etc. When you reach fourth level paladin, in this instance, you will become a sixth level caster and a second level paladin caster. At fifth level, you can cast second level paladin spells, but your overall caster level would not increase. And one third casters are even worse. So let's take our second level bard, second level sorcerer, and fourth level paladin. We're not doing that that fifth level because it's gonna make things even more complicated. So we are a sixth level caster. Let's add three levels of fighter Eldritch Knight in. Then we become a seventh level caster at character level 11. Normally, we get second level spells for fighter Eldritch Knight at fighter level seven. So that's our level three basis. However, here, when we put another three in for fighter level six, Character level 14, we increment our caster level to 8. Since we gained three more one-third caster levels, we don't get anything here for our improved fighter. We don't get second level spells or anything like that. It's at the next level. Fighter 7, character 15, caster level uh, 8 still. We will get our second level fighter spells without a change in our caster level. This is so much... And it probably made no sense, but that's the thick of multi-classing spellcasting. It's kind of messy, but there's a way to do it right. And that's make sure that you're not wasting levels if you don't need other things at those levels. Don't go Paladin 5, Cleric 5 if you don't care about extra attack. Second level Paladin spells. I guess there's a lot for Paladin 5. And now, let's get back to what we do best here on Dirty Twenties D&D, lists. Let's do some good build-out lists for minimum level casters in every single class that gets spellcasting or packed magic. Now, this is base level stuff, so Artificer gets their magic at level 1, and that's the only level we're going to care about. They get two cantrips and two first level slots. As mentioned before, they are weird. They prep their spells fresh every day from the entire list for their class. So their leveled spells don't matter because they could make a mistake and change their stuff tomorrow. However, their cantrip choices really do. My recommendations for artificers is to make sure you take a utility cantrip and a damage dealing one. So mending and firebolt. If you're planning on going with a ranged artificer though, so like a artillerist or alchemist, uh, maybe take shocking grasp instead. Level 1 spells that are a good looking two for Artificers are Cure Wounds, Fairy Fire, and Sanctuary. 
Bards also get their magic at level 1. They get 2 cantrips and 4 spells known, so same thing. Take a damaging cantrip and a utility one. And for spells, maybe split it down the middle. Maybe deviate more into utility or more into damage, but bards are, bards are, the, bards are the everyman. They need some utility. So for cantrips, I would go with Message and Vicious Mockery. For spells, uh, Charm Person or Command, Cure Wounds or Healing Word, Silvery Barbs, and Sleep or Thunder Wave. Clerics get Magic at level 1 too. They get 3 cantrips and, like Artificers, 2 first level slots with the ability to reprep every day. For cantrips, I like to go with Spare the Dying, Guidance, and Sacred Flame. And for spells, Cure Wounds or Healing Word, Shield of Faith, Guiding Bolt or Inflict Wounds, and command. Druids are the last one for a moment to get their spells at level 1. They get two cantrips and the same two first level slots with the ability to reprep. So for cantrips, I like to take Druid Craft and either Shillelagh or Thorn Whip. I said that weird. And for first level spells, I like Entangle, Cure Wounds, Protection from Evil and Good, and maybe Absorb Elements? It's an, it's an iffy one. Eldritch Knight is a subclass for fighters, so they get the magic at level 3 when fighters get their subclass. You get two cantrips and three spells. They learn their spells from the wizard list. They learn abjuration and evocation spells, except for certain levels as stated in the book here. You learn you learn one that's not those. So I like to take Firebolt and Shocking Grasp. And then for spells, Shield, Magic Missile, and Silvery Barbs for our spell from any other school. Arcane Trickster is a subclass for Rogue, so they get their magic at level 3 as well. You learn Mage Hand and two other cantrips, as well as three first level spells. You must choose these spells from Enchantment or Illusion, except for at certain levels, blah blah blah. So I like to choose Frostbite or Mind Sliver and Prestidigitation or Minor Illusion for our cantrips, and Silvery Barbs, Disguise Self, and then either Shield, Ice Knife, or Witch Bolt for our third spell from any school, it's kinda up to you. Paladin gets their spellcasting at level 2, and they get no cantrips. They can prep half their level rounded down, plus their charisma. If you go with the Blessed Warrior fighting style, you do get two cantrips on the cleric list, but that's kinda garbo, so I don't like doing it. For spells, go with ones that are not worth smiting for. So, Cure Wounds, Shield of Faith, or Thunderous Searing or Wrathful Smite. Those are all good options. If you don't smite by casting a spell, you won't waste your slot on any of those. Rangers, like Paladins, get their half-casting at level 2, they get no cantrips unless they use their fighting style to take them, and unlike Paladins, they have a definitive amount of spells they know. And don't worry about preparing them, they just are, like Bard and Sorcerer and whatever. They got two spells, and here are my suggestions for what yours could be. Any of these are fine. Cure Wounds, Ensnaring Strike, Hail of Thorns, Hunter's Mark, and Zephyr Strike. Probably take Cure Wounds in one of those others, depending on the kind of Ranger you're making and your party makeup. Sorcerers, as well as the last two classes going after it, get their magic at level 1. They learn 4 cantrips and 2 first level spells. I like to take Firebolt or Frostbite, maybe Dancing Lights, Minor Illusion or Prestidigitation, Shocking Grasp, and maybe Mind Sliver. For first level spells, I like to take Chaos Bolt or Chromatic Orb and Shield. Make sure you get a good defense and a good offense spell because Sorcerers be squishy. Warlocks get their weird-ass packed magic at level 1. They learn two cantrips and two first level spells with their one measly little slot. I like to take Eldritch Blast and Mage Hand usually. For spells, Armor of Agathis and Hellish Rebuke are kinda hard to beat, but Hex and Witch Bolt are good too. I like to make my Warlocks very combat-y if you get me, so I mold them into reaction casters usually. I'll give them Shield if I go Hexblade. I'll get Hellish Rebuke from my Tiefling because you gotta have your Warlock be a Tiefling, and I'll choose Counterspell when I hit 5th level Warlock, and uh, pretty much never cast outside of those, because why would you? You have a sword. It, it does the talking for you. Sometimes literally. Wizards are the last class for today. You learn 3 cantrips and 6 first level spells at level 1. I like to take Firebolt or Frostbite, Prestidigitation or Minor Illusion, and Mage Hand. And for spells, you've gotta take Mage Armor, Magic Missile, and Shield, of course then probably Chromatic Orb or Witch Bolt, Silvery Barbs, Detect Magic, Identify, Comprehend Languages, Sleep, Charm Person, and Burning Hands. And okay, I got kind of carried away there, but that's what wizards do. They grab scrolls and learn well beyond their means. So in a way it worked out. And that's where we're gonna leave off for today. I really hope this video was helpful and informative. It included literally everything about spellcasting in 5e, so it better have been. If you like what you saw, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Go and follow us on Patreon, and also our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. 
I'm gonna go take a nap. I guess that's it for today, guys. Bye.